360 Sports Matter. All right, everyone, here we go. The heart of a giant, but I'm going to go into depth uh, why I have a heart of a giant. Uh, basically, it all started growing up in Philadelphia. Obviously, we all know Philly is a tough city to grow up in with, with all the, the violence, the drugs, the people. Just a big city filled with a lot of different things. And growing up, it was, it was, it was a little tough, but I got through it. Uh, so when I was about five years old, uh, my dad was incarcerated. And uh, that took a toll on me to a certain extent uh, as far as football, household things. So I had to step up to the plate in a, in a big way. So my mom, she would work like numerous hours over time every day. I would, and then she would get off work and she would take me to football practice. And it was just like tough a little bit because of I get to practice and after practice all my teammates they would talk to their dads or their dad would critique some of their skills or tell them I should have did this and done should have done that. And I just had like, hey hey, what's going on? My house work and it was like it was never that that extra extra passion through a father figure. But uh, growing up that, that kind of made me who I am today, it made my heart as big as big as it is today. And uh, you know, that that powered me and I used that as fuel to get through anything in life. My final year at Pop Warner, uh, I, just, I had to decide what high school I wanted to go to in Philadelphia. And in Philly, they have a lot of powerful football schools and some, you know, powerful academic and football schools. So uh, I actually chose a school in Philadelphia based off the academics and also for football purposes. A lot of my previous teammates and uh, older cousins and brothers actually went to the, the high school in Philadelphia that I attended. And it was a good choice. And then my freshman year, I got a few touches on JB. My sophomore year, I kind of bumped it up. I played special teams on, on varsity kick, uh, kick return. And then my junior year, I was expecting, you know, get a few carries on varsity. It didn't go as planned. And everyone was overlooking me because of my size. They said I didn't fit the offense package that they wanted, or I was doing too much dancing, too much east-west, and all that type of stuff. And, I used that as fuel, just like I used my problems growing up as fuel. And I just grinded every day. And then I just felt as though it was time for a change. So October of 2014, I, uh, I started the transfer process out of my school in Philadelphia. And I was basically, I focused much on academic because it's life after football. So I tried to transfer to a school that could support me athletically and academically. So with that being said, I started uh, applying to a lot of Interact schools in the Philadelphia area. And to be honest with you, I applied to eight schools and all eight of them turned me down. Head of head masters, head of admissions, tell me straight to my face that, oh, if you, can't, if you come to this school, you won't be able to handle the work academically based on your background and what schools you previously went to. And it just felt like, a, like a, it shot me down kind of. And, and it was like hard. So I'm like, man, like I'm doing everything right. I'm working hard, I'm doing my schoolwork, I'm being respectful, I'm just doing all the things that a, a student athlete is supposed to do. Now, I don't, want, I don't want to pat on the back for the things I'm supposed to do, but some things you just, you just deserve a, a earning for. It. So basically, it was just like a tough process. So from J July to August, I had no school to go to, so I'm still trying to scamper around and trying to find a school to go to. And uh, one of my good friends, Josh, who actually played quarterback at the school I went to in Philadelphia. He actually had a trainer who's currently my head coach, uh, Christopher Maleo. And uh, one day I came up to uh, Coach Chris's school and um, I was catching a few footballs from my quarterback because he was uh, training that day. So uh, I talked to Coach uh, Chris Maleo and I was just like, Coach, like, you think I have any space on your roster for me or anywhere I can get in, like I'll do anything, any position you need me to play, I'm here and he's like, well, this is my first year here. Like, listen, I would love for, to take you in, give you a chance to get you some exposure, get you ready for your college uh, level uh, football and stuff like that. So, Coach Chris Millet went out his way for me, and um, which that was that was a big big up. And uh, so the process went on, the process went on. I just waited patiently, patiently. Still continued to work out four days a week, condition two days a week. I continued to do my normal routine on the off season. And then, one day, Coach Maleo called me and said he started the process for me. I, had, I gave him all my recommendations, my transcripts, report cards, everything he needed. I had everything to go because I, 
I did the whole process with all the other schools. So once that took off, about two weeks later, I get an email, well, my mom gets an email from the Betty School, and it's just like, congratulations, Keyshawn, you gotta be accepted. And I was just like, this is it, this is my chance. And once I got that chance, I ran with it. I did great my first year here, academically, athletically. And it's just like, currently I'm on a rise right now, uh, breaking my school's touchdown rushing record. And everything is going great. I've been getting recruited by numerous uh, Ivy League schools, also D1AA schools. And I'm just, Petty opened up so many doors for me. So when I got to Petty my first, uh, first year here, I reclassified as a junior. And uh, all my friends and family back home were like wondering, like, what is Keyshawn gonna do this year? What is Keyshawn gonna do? Cause I never got a chance to expose my skills on the field. So uh, it was, it was kind of like all eyes on me at this point. So my first game uh, of 2015 season at Petty, I was against uh, Poly Prep uh, from New York. And it was like a big game. My family came, a lot of recruiters were there. A lot of recruiters were there because of the teammates that I had on my team that were heavily recruited by those uh, big FBS schools. And I was just like, hey, listen, this is, this is my chance, my opportunity, this is what I've been wanting for some time now. And I just, I just did, I just showed out. And I just, Coach Millet was like, man, like, oh, I knew you, I knew you had it in you. Like, and all my friends, I would get texts that night after the game. Like, dang, bro, you had a good game. Like, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you got your chance. My mother was so proud of me. And my dad finally got a chance to see me play football for the first time when I came to Petty because he was incarcerated for some time now. So it was really emotional for, emotional for, uh, for me. And I was just like, man, like, this is, this is what I've been doing, dad. Like, now you can see, man, like, this, this, is, this, is what, this is what I've been getting into. A lot of good stuff going on in my life right now. Dad was so like, and he was just so happy for me. My mom was happy, my grandmother, they all were like, happy for me. So uh, after that, I just took off. Each game, it was like effort. I just gave my best, every rep, 100% everything. Best is a standard, and that's what we go by here at Petty. And it's just been like, ever since then, my, my foot's been on the gas pedal. A lot of people growing up kind of doubted me a lot because of my size, of my small stature, and, and people were always doubting me. Like, man, you can't do this, you can't do that. You too small, this and that. I've, and, and I've got this from my coaches back at my school prior to Petty. And it was just like, wow, like, what does that have to do with anything? I worked hard every day in the weight room, off season, grind hard to the dirt, throwing up, passing out, tired. I just give everything I got. And I'm just saying to myself, like, wow, that isn't enough. Like, so like, now that people can see my full potential, I always get the comparison. Like, hey, you, you remind me of the Eagles running back, Darren Sproles. I get that a lot. And I'm like, yeah, like, this guy stands at 5'6", 180 pounds, and he's doing everything on the NFL level. And this is like, I can be him. And I, and I, and I use him as, as an idol. And it'd be like, man, I can be like Darren Sproles. I'm sure he was doubted growing up. I'm sure he was overlooked, underrated. And that's, and that's, and that's what we use, we use that feel, we use that as a go, as a gas pedal to get going. And it's just something that you take with you, take it on the chin and you keep moving forward. We can't let no other people's words bring you down. And that's why I feel like my heart on the field, off the field, it plays a major role in everything I do in life. And that's why I continue, continue to make other people realize my full potential open up a few eyes. And that's why I feel as though I had a heart of a giant. And as you can see, man, like, and going to my senior season, uh, the second game of my senior season, I had a, uh, we played St. Peter's Prep, which is the number one team in uh, New Jersey. And it was just like, man, like, this is crazy. This live stream, thousands of people there in the stands. A lot of uh, football recruiters, because both both our teams had phenomenal players who were being recruited nationwide, and it's just like this is my chance to show these people who've been doubting me what I really can do, just like I did previously in my 2015 season here at Petty. So my senior year, I had a phenomenal run against uh, St. Peter's Prep. It was 45-yard touchdown, and I basically drew half the team, or even more than half the team that was on the field at the time. And I had I seen the move, I got the ball, cut back, I seen something else, cut back off the floor, and I seen the crease, he hit the crease, broke one, he broke another tackle, he went down the sideline. It was just like, wow, I did that, like, not everything, every time I scored a touchdown, 
Yeah. Yeah. Anytime I do something spectacular on the field or off the field, I just think about those like who doubted me from day one and told me I couldn't do X, Y, and Z or I couldn't succeed because of my size or because my background academically or where I came from and my household and stuff like that. So all this play a role in what I do on and off the field. So like I keep saying, I use that as fuel and keep me going. And it's gonna to continue to keep me going because I'm gonna to continue to open up more eyes and I'm gonna to continue to prove everybody wrong. And it's just not going to stop now. You can have the size, you can have the skill, you can have the speed, you can have the potential. But if you don't have the heart, you won't be able to do anything. Ain't this what they've been waiting for? You ready? Uh, uh, I used to pray for times like this, to rhyme like this, so I had to grind like that, to shine like this, in a matter of time I spent on some locked up in the back of the paddy wagon, cuffs locked on wrist, see my dreams unfold, nightmares come true, it was time to marry the game and I said yeah I do, if you want it you gotta see it with a clear eye view, got shorty she try and bless me like I said I chew, like a sneeze, Please for them trick to squeeze, I'm getting cream. Never let them no. get in between and we'll be started. Look, but I'm lying hearted. They love me when I was stuck and they hate it. When I departed, I go and get it regardless. Draw it like I'm an artist, no crawling. Went straight to walking with foreigns in my garages or foreign menage. Just sucking and swallowing anything for a dollar. They tell me, get him, I got him. I did it without an album. I did it with Mariah. Love, I'm on fire Icy as a hockey ring, Philly, flyer When I bought the Rolls Royce, they thought it was lease Then I bought that new Ferrari, hey, to rest in peace Hey, to rest in peace, rest in peace to the parking lot Phantom so big, can't even fit in the parking spot You ain't talking about my then what you talking about? Gangsta move in silence, and I don't talk a lot I don't say a word, I don't say a word What's on my grind and now I got what I deserve